Now, new data from the British Acupuncture Council shows almost three quarters of people prefer trying alternative therapies such as acupuncture before prescription painkillers when dealing with chronic pain. Data from the council also find a staggering rise in the number of people seeking alternative treatment after being unable to tolerate NHS waiting lists caused by the pandemic. Acupuncturist and practitioner director from the British Acupuncture Council. Gosh, that's a long title, isn't it? <laughs> there she is. She's Sarah Major. Uh, she joins us now. Sarah, hi. Very good to talk to you. Um, what can... There's a lot of claims about acupuncture. Basically, who would you recommend it for and what do you believe it can do? Well, acupuncture has been subject to a lot of research over the last 40 years. And the evidence is that it is very effective for uh, musculoskeletal uh, problems, um, chronic pain and for migraines and headaches. Uh, NICE currently recommended as a first stop for chronic pain. Sceptical. I'll be perfectly honest. I didn't know much about acupuncture. I thought it was perhaps something like reflexology or I just didn't really know much about it. And um, a good while ago now, I broke my wrist. And after taking the cast off, I had absolutely no flexibility or movement in my wrist and it wasn't getting any better. And I was referred to an acupuncturist. And I kid you not, the acupuncturist put one needle in the middle of my forearm and before my very eyes, my hand went like that. And ever since then... I've been a convert. I, I saw it with my own eyes. I could not move my wrist. I don't know what this acupuncturist did, but it was, it was absolutely life-changing for me. Well, that, that's really wonderful to hear. And I think this is where the British Acupuncture Council is, is pushing to validate these anecdotal stories with, with really robust evidence. And in recent times, we, we have been demonstrating exactly the sort of... Um, experience you've had and it, it's wonderful to hear firsthand. Um, I, I've witnessed the same from the other side as a practitioner. I bet you the first thing people say to you, Sarah, is does it hurt? Uh, in my experience over the years, yes, it does. I don't think so. Well, you are not my body. You're not... Well, you've uh, got a low pain threshold. Well, I can tell you, well, my, my whole problem, you talk about that muscular skeletal thing and uh, into your legs and lower back and all that sort of thing, Sarah, but I have found bingo, they hit really sensitive points with me. So it's not that I'm saying it doesn't work, it hasn't got benefits. I'm just saying, oh, I, I just can't stand the, uh, the, the pain on, on the whole thing. Um, but Sarah, we, we only have to look to the States to see what happens when we become too dependent on painkillers and, and opioids and all the rest of it. And, and it's creeping in over here, I fear. I don't know if you get that feeling. So is there a case to be made for acupuncture to be the first port of call more commonly than, than, than drugs? Yes, as well. You're absolutely right. Um, the opioid crisis is increasing dramatically over here. And unfortunately, um, if people use access the NHS through their GPs, the GPs first line of, of treatment is is painkillers. And this is this is just fueling this crisis. And fortunately, uh, and, and as you've experienced, um, acupuncture can be a, an alternative to popping pills. And 70% of people we found in a recent study would prefer to use complementary pa um, pain relief um, for, for, for pain, for chronic pain. And 36% um, are, are much more likely to seek that um, alternative therapy th than, than go through the NHS due to the current crisis. Um, acupuncture is a really effective painkiller, as been demonstrated by, by research that NICE has approved. Um, and just to go back to your point, Eamon, um, we've just we found out that that actually 23% of people fear that acupuncture may be painful. 20% um, have a fear of needles. Um, and but but really, I think the the consideration is that we think of needles um, as users of of the NHS in terms of injections and blood taking for, for tests, whereas the needles that we use for acupuncture are very, very tiny. And yes, you do get some sensation when, when the points are stimulated, but most people describe this as being really transitory and, and minimally painful. And actually, the majority of people describe it as a, as a 
a, a, a comfortable sensation, sometimes a tingling, sometimes a slight dragging. But really, the, the fear of pain or needles should not put people off. Acupuncture really is a very, very pleasant, relaxing treatment. Yeah, lots no, of it's emails. Not. Oh, no, I've had hundreds of them. You can fall asleep yeah. during it. Basically, you can also hit the jackpot, Sarah, and it hits the nerve center on, and it's 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 not a pleasant experience. I mean, I'm sure there are times that it, that it can be. Yeah. But let me, you know, I'm just speaking personally. Yeah. Um, let me tell you, uh, what way does the National Health Service embrace you guys, Sarah, or does it not? Yeah, it is it's, it's quite, still quite difficult to access acupuncture through the NHS, although um, many physios are, are training to use acupuncture techniques that they can employ as, as employees of the, of the NHS. So it is possible, but we at the British Acupuncture Council are really encouraging the NHS and NICE to consider acupuncture as a first stop treatment that will be available to all patients. Uh, from somebody called Paul Mills. I suffered with tennis elbow for many years. I had cortisone injections a few times, but it didn't cure the problem. My doctor suggested I try acupuncture. They had a visiting therapist once a month. I had the treatment once and I was cured and I've never suffered from the problem since. I mean, anecdotal evidence, as you say, but lovely to hear these kinds of stories and refreshing to have something different from the kind of take the painkillers, numb the pain mantra. How, how, can, how do you explain how it works, Sarah? What is it actually doing? Yeah, the acupuncture is over 2000 years old. And so the actual fundamentals of the of the treatment methodology were developed many, many years ago. We access a, a different system of the body, although acupuncturists are trained in anatomy, physiology and, and normal medical training in their three years of training. We, we access something that is described as chi. It's like the fundamental energy that that drives each individual and really makes each person more susceptible to certain illnesses or disease or um, propensity to chronic pain in, in the, you know, in the format that we're discussing. So it's, it's slightly it's slightly difficult to explain because everybody thinks in Western terms. And although, as I say, we, we, we acknowledge anatomy and physiology and pathology, we use a dis different system of diagnosis and treatment to access the body's own um, ability to heal itself, really. Will that continue? It's a new way of looking at things. And um, the uh, your people, the British Acupuncture Council, uh, say that seven out of ten of its members have seen a rise in the number of people looking to treat chronic pain in this way. So um, thank you very much indeed. We'll see if that affects the NHS uh, backlog uh, situation as well. But that's Sarah Major. Sarah is a practitioner and she is uh, the director at the British Acupuncture Council. Thank, thank you very you. much indeed, Sarah.